For many of us, the execution of an American journalist by terrorists is something to note and comment on. To one man, it is the second time he has been forced to watch a friend beheaded. And now, he wants action. For those wondering what the president plans to do on the immigration issue before the midterm elections, stop holding your breath. Strategic plan or trying to duck a losing campaign issue? We go around the dial also to the heart of Clinton country in Arkansas. Visit a woman who met a poll in a very unique fashion on her way to Outland and see how the world is covering the tragedy of another murdered journalist. That's in News Call. No one covers the world and the issues as we do. I'm Ed Berliner. We question everything for Wednesday, September 3rd, 2014. I am Stephen Joel Sotloff. I'm sure you know exactly who I am by now and why I am appearing before you. And now, it is time for my message. Obama, your foreign policy of intervention in Iraq was supposed to be for the preservation of American lives and interests. So why is it that I'm having to pay the price of your interference with my life? Am I not an American citizen? We've spent billions of U.S. taxpayers' dollars, and we've lost thousands of our troops in our previous fighting against the Islamic State. So where's the American people's interests in reigniting this war? For many of us, the execution of Stephen Sotloff is a video we cannot watch, a family we cannot consider what the emotional level is on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, a cowardly and callous act we can only imagine the level of brutality it takes to enact. For others, it is much more personal and speaks to a greater issue of the question we have been asking all day here on Midpoint. What are we prepared to do? Welcome back to Midpoint. Middle East analyst, blogger for Huffington Post, former prisoner of war, freedom fighter, and also award-winning documentary filmmaker, Matthew Van Dyke. Matthew, thank you so much for being with us again. Nice talking to you again, Ed. Matthew, I know that you've spent a lot of time in the last 24 hours or so seeing that video again. You've also seen the James Foley video many times. Both were friends of yours. The first thing that comes to mind is a very human question, I guess. How you doing? You know, it's, it's difficult. I've lost two friends in two weeks. Um, a mixture of sadness, anger, uh, outrage that, that this has happened again. And, you know, it's a full, full range of emotion. When you saw what happened to James Foley, did you almost expect, I mean, you never anticipate something like this, you don't want it to happen, but knowing the hands of the people that Stephen Sotloff was in, did you almost have to, with a dread, expect this day was gonna happen? You know, I, I did expect it, I prepared myself at first, but after two weeks went by and U.S. airstrikes had continued and, and there was no video of Sotloff, I thought maybe there were negotiations going on behind the scenes, so I had, I had sort of had a false hope that Mal's been crushed. There are many people now who will look for blame. Do you, as someone who has been in that situation before, who has been a hostage, who knows what it's like in that part of the world, honestly, do you blame the President of the United States for the death of your two friends? No, I, I blame ISIS for the death of my two friends. Um, they're the ones responsible. They're the ones who put the knives to their throats. Uh, and that's where the blame needs to be. I, I do have some serious questions about the reports that the administration had intel on where the hostages were located and may not have acted on it for weeks. Uh, and when they did, the hostages have been moved. That, that disturbs me greatly, and that may have cost them their lives. But I hope that the press will look into that. Can you then blame, I know it's hard to keep asking for blame, but it's a type of country that we are in a situation like this, it always happens though. Can you hold the president to blame though for dragging his feet, for not getting things done quick, for a slow response for the death of your friends? If that turns out to be the case, yes, there's responsibility there for sure on the president. Uh, the government knew that hostages were being moved from location to location. And if it's true that as many as 30 days went by from the time that the administration had intel on where the hostages were to when the rescue operation was launched, 
then that, that's a serious problem. And that is some blame to go to the president for that if that is, turns out to be the case. Here's a soundbite I want you to hear. Theresa May, she is the British Home Secretary, and this was their reaction to the execution of Stephen Sotloff. It is, yet again, uh, we see a barbaric act being undertaken by ISIL, um, who are uh, a group of murderous psychopaths. Uh, their brutality is clear. Uh, I think our thoughts today must, of course, be with Stephen Sotloff's family and friends. Um, at this very difficult time for them. Matthew, she calls them murderous psychopaths, but is it not also fair to say that they are intelligent psychopaths, that they know what they're doing, and that in many ways, this is a group that is doing everything they can to draw the United States into a conflict, correct? Well, there's certainly a mix. You know, the people that join ISIS are a mix of psychopaths, of religious zealots, and adventure seekers that first show up to fight or because they believe in the Syrian cause and then they end up indoctrinated. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard to explain these people. Um, but whether or not they're intelligent, I mean, they, they've just picked a fight with the most powerful country in the history of the planet. And it's not going to turn out well for them. I think if they had focused on just their regional ambitions and not started executing U.S. citizens on video, that they would have possibly even had their Islamic State last for two or three years. Uh, at the rate they're going now, the full weight of the United States is about to come down on them, hopefully. Um, and it will sh be proven not to have been a smart move on their part. When we talk about these people, you just use the phrase adventure seekers, which I think will catch a lot of people by surprise. We've heard these things before. But from your personal experience, what's behind those people who are adventure seekers? What is the adventure in butchering people? Well, a lot of those cases, these are people that are dissatisfied with their life in especially Europe or the UK, a lot of times they're first or second or third generation um, of immigrants from this region. And they look for adventure like young men do. They have fantasies about war. They've watched too many movies. So they go over there with these notions of heroism in their minds. But once there, they start becoming indoctrinated and eventually become extremists. So they go from you know, relatively normal but a little crazy adventure seeking young men to zealots. Matthew, as someone who was a POW and you know these type of people, this is a question I've been asked by several folks in the last 24 hours. We see the videotapes of Foley, we see the tapes of Sotloff, and we hear them, and they're talking to the camera, they're reciting words, undoubtedly written for them. But what people are struck by is how they are so calm and they are so composed as they are doing this, knowing full well that there's probably a, a, an eventual chance that they're going to die when this is all done. Can you give us a sense of what that might be like, how someone facing an imminent death can be so composed at that instant? Well, these are both very courageous individuals. Uh, it takes a lot of courage for them to have gone to Syria and Libya in the first place. From my own experience, I know uh, once in Iraq when I was mock executed by Iraqi security forces and also in Libya when I, I felt I was facing death um, during my prison escape when I thought at first that they were guards coming to kill me. I was the same way because you realize that death is coming or is likely coming and it's a mix of you want to keep your head up, you want to go out with dignity, you don't want, um, in my case, I didn't want Gaddafi to hear that the American was begging for his life or anything like that. So you know, there's, there's a number of reasons, but there's a, a kind of a peace that comes to you when you know that death is imminent. And, and it, it's strange. It's like a calm that comes over you that, that gives you composure that you wouldn't otherwise think you would have. When we look at what's happening here. There is a lot of discourse about Guantanamo, about America's torture. There's a lot of discussion about it here. Could you briefly just give us an idea and tell the people what kind of torture that these guys went, underwent in the years that they were held, in the months they were held? 
Yeah, the only concrete report that's come out was waterboarding um, and beatings. But generally speaking, common torture methods in the region include ripping out one's fingernails with a pair of pliers, um, stringing people up uh, by their arms hanging from a ceiling, and electrocution. Uh, the Syrian regime in particular includes sort of uh, sexual sadism and other things like that. In the case of the hostages, from what I've heard though, it was limited to beating and waterboarding. I hope that they didn't suffer too much. I only got 15 seconds left. Are you confident that America will do everything it possibly can to strike back at these people or do you still have your doubts? I still have my doubts. There's been a lot of tough talk in the past 24, 48 hours, but I, I want to see it backed up by action. This administration's policies in the region have been lacking in so many ways that there's little reason to believe that this will be any different. Matthew, I know it's been a tough couple of days. I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I hope we speak again under better circumstances. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, go ahead and check out our Newsmax poll for today because we also want the people who watch us here around the world to get involved as well. Go to Newsmax.com and find out an answer should the U.S. strike ISIS in Syria.